What's going on guys, it's Baz here from Game and Gem and today we're going to be taking a look at the Endgame XM1. This is an ambidextrous gaming mouse from Endgame Gear. This is their first mouse that they've released and overall I've been really really impressed with the mouse. The XM1 has some of the best clicks that I've experienced coming close to the likes of the G Pro Wireless and other Logitech products. I think the clicks are amazing. I also think the shape is extremely underrated which I'll go into in a little bit more detail later on. However, no mouse is without its flaws and I think the Endgame gear have missed out on a couple of crucial things that if they were to apply these things to the mouse, it could really be a contender for potentially my own number one, if not a top three mouse. But let's dive into the specs and give you guys an idea of what the XM1 has to offer. So jumping straight into the dimensions, the length is coming in at 12.1 centimeters or 121 millimeters. So it's around about the same size as a Zowie S2 or slightly bigger than the Glorious Model O minus. The width is coming in at 6.3 centimeters or 63 millimeters but the actual grip width is a lot smaller at 5.6 centimeters or 56 millimeters. This is just due to the nature of the side grips. As for the height, it's coming in at 3.7 centimeters or 37 millimeters. And as for the weight, it's around about 70 grams. So it's in between a Glorious Model Low and a G Pro Wireless. The XM1 is using the PMW3389, which is a high-end optical sensor. There's been zero spin-outs or any problems whatsoever with tracking, and it allows for up to 16,000 DPI. With the specs out of the way, I want to jump straight into the shape because I think this is where the XM1 really shines. On the surface, it looks like your standard ambidextrous mouse, but the XM1 is actually very unique. The main thing to be aware of is the back of the mouse, which you can see here has these flared outsides. Unlike most ambidextrous mice, which are usually pretty straight from front to back on the side grips, the XM1 effectively has hips, which I found to be extremely comfortable and they actually fit really nicely into the base of your palm. If you're a claw grip player or fingertip player, it is still very likely that the very base of your palm may rest against the back of your mouse and the XM1 suits this kind of grip style so nicely because of these flared out sides that just fit straight into your hand. The XM1 also looks as though it's quite wide but the grip width is only around about 56 millimeters, so it's actually a lot narrower than you'd think. So don't be worried if you think that it's going to be too big for your hands. The nature of the side grips make the grip width a lot narrower than it actually looks. As for the side grips themselves, they're very comfortable. I like the defined thumb grooves and they remind me a little bit of the Zowie S1 matte version, just that same kind of texture and grip. The XM1 has a fairly defined hump compared to the Glorious Model O or the G Pro Wireless. This makes the mouse really versatile because it can be used by palm, claw or fingertip players. The hump does not get in the way for claw or fingertip players, but it provides enough support if you are a palm grip player with smaller hands. All right, so the clicks of the XM1 are fantastic. The primary one and primary two mouse buttons are some of the best clicks that I've experienced since using the G Pro Wireless. I think Logitech have the best clicks that you can get right now and the Endgame XM1 is the only mouse that has come close to those kind of clicks. I think they're extremely tactile and they just feel really crisp and responsive. As for the one millisecond response time with the analog clicks that Endgame are trying to push with this mouse, I don't think that they make any significant difference. I've not noticed any sort of latency improvement through using this mouse compared to any of the other mice I use. I just think it's a little bit of a marketing gimmick and to not look too much into it because I've not really noticed any significant difference. It's not the one millisecond response time that Endgame Gear are claiming that sells this mouse, it's the clicks themselves. As for the side buttons though, they're a completely different story. Unfortunately, they have a fair amount of pre-travel and the angled shape of the buttons just doesn't feel good. Obviously this is personal preference, but I'm not sure why they decided to go with this shape instead of the standard flat side buttons. After having used the mouse for a few weeks now, the side buttons have grown on me a little bit. Yes, the pre-travel is quite bad, but it hasn't actually affected my gameplay. But it's worth knowing for those of you out there that are really picky when it comes to pre-travel, just that these buttons do feel a little bit mushy. It's just dependent on how much you use your side buttons. If Endgame Gear upgraded the side buttons to feel more tactile and less mushy, then it would drastically increase the potential of this mouse. 
Jumping on over to the scroll wheel, it's really solid. I like it more than the Glorious Mod Low, but not as much as the G Pro Wireless. I think the steps are really nice and defined and they're not too heavy and not too light. They're somewhere in between, which I really like. Moving on to the cable, come on Endgame Gear. Why are you not putting in a paracord instead of a rubber cable? I think this has really let the mouse down. Honestly, this mouse is probably gonna be my number one mouse, my, my main, but the cable and the side buttons just pull it down a few notches. Obviously you can paracord this, which is just gonna make this mouse nuts in my opinion, but for their next mouse, Endgame Gear really need to think about putting on a paracord as stock because the rubber cable is quite stiff and um, you can definitely feel it moving on from the likes of a Glorious Model O or even the Skull or the MM710. You can just really notice the resistance of the rubber cable compared to the stock paracords we've been getting spoiled with more recently. Moving back to a positive, the PTFE feet are great. I was a little bit concerned with the shape of the feet, but they actually glide really nicely against my Steel Series Quick Plus and even my slower GSR. Unfortunately, you don't get any spare feet in the box, and at the moment, as of this video, you can't buy extra feet. I believe Endgame Gear are in the process of trying to sort that out, but if you want to paracord this mouse, you're going to end up ruining your feet unless you take them off really carefully. You can actually use uh, Zowie feet just as a replacement, but it's kind of a shame that they've not included extra mouse feet in the box. During my playtesting over the past few weeks, I've noticed zero durability issues with the mouse. There's no rattle, everything seems really solid, but I'll be sure to update any of you guys if the mouse breaks or if I have any problems in the near future. The texture of the mouse feels really strong and durable, but it is a massive fingerprint magnet. I mean, I've been trying to keep it clean for taking some of these shots and it's pretty much impossible. If you've got really greasy hands, then it probably will show up quite a lot. Might not be a big deal for some of you, but it's something to be aware of. Overall, I think that the Exomon is a fantastic ambidextrous mouse. It lends itself to all grip styles, depending on your hand size, whether you're palm, fingertip, or claw grip. I think that the side flares are excellent. They provide some really nice control with the mouse. The primary clicks are honestly great. Some of the best clicks that I've tried, but I do think that the side button pre-travel and the cable does let the mouse down. I might paracord it and start playing with it a little bit more as I have been having some great success with it, but hopefully Endgame Gear take these few things on board for their next mouse because they're definitely on the right track here. All right guys, that's my review of the Endgame Gear XM1. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you have, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let me know in the comments as to whether or not you're thinking of picking one up. Don't forget to check the links in the description as well for links towards the site and my socials and I'll catch you guys in the next one.